Hi guys, good morning. Welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill. Just a bit of a chat today and then um, I'll show you some stock towards the end of the film. It's six o'clock in the morning, bloody freezing. And I mean freezing out. It's uh, minus two at the moment. I'm in, as you can see, I'm in the car driving to Besma. Quite a shock, as you'll see behind me, the car's almost empty. I'm working a car boot sale though. Now, those of you who know me know when I work a car boot sale, I utilize every bit of space in my car and on my stall. Well, bear with me. Ah, hello. <laughs> um, however, <coughs> I am no longer bringing antiques to a car boot sale. They all went to the shop. Now, what have I got on today? Things I've bought over the last 12 months that I don't want, don't want to put in the shop, um, or one or two bits I've had returned. Now, I got the likes of generators, garden rotivators, um, trying to think. I got shooting sticks in here that have come into the shop that are not selling through the shop for some reason so I'm going to put them on the market let the dealers have them um, I've got uh, the crate of corgi cars and dinky cars I've been selling them slowly out of the shop um, but I'm, I've brought the leftovers down here I've got uh, three clocks in the back here all of which I've had trouble with with the shop all clocks when bought were working beautifully um, the one clock as you know um, I talked about in yesterday's video where I, uh, I sold it <coughs> she broke it and brought it back demanding a refund I give her a refund purely because I didn't need um, a bad name on the first month of opening my shop that is the only reason I gave her a refund I'll take a bit of a loss and yeah, bite the bullet on that one but at the same time I didn't know what my rights and her rights were and etc etc but uh, after speaking to trade standards you had that talk in the video yesterday so I got a few clocks on <coughs> I'm just not feeling confident selling them through the shop that I want to have a return or an argument with them so I just don't want to put them in the shop I'd rather sell a set of six champagne glasses or brandy glasses in the shop or a bit of silver or a bit of gold uh, something that I know once they've bought it doesn't come back um, ah, what else have I got on there let me think I've got um, an old vintage traveling trunk metal one it looks empty doesn't it I know and normally it'd be full all the way up so I've got over half a car that I haven't even used Yet I've got between two and three hundred pounds worth of stock in the car that I'm confident they'll sell today. I'll be very surprised if I come home with anything today. It's all the type of stuff that I can sell in a blink of an eye. If it ain't to the public, it's to the traders, and it's all going to be, you know, between thirty and fifty pounds. So there's probably ten pieces in here today. That's all I'm taking. Probably ten or twelve pieces to the boot sale gonna be the easiest unpacking pack I have had in my entire life but I should still come away with a few hundred pound today if I do then great um, another purpose of coming down obviously I wanted to give out leaflets this was the main reason of me coming to Bessemer today as you know I've opened up the shop and I've been doing leafleting on a Sunday uh, and last Sunday, to be honest with you, I leafleted an estate um, about a mile from my shop and the Monday was absolutely amazing, I couldn't keep up with them. So the leaflets are working. But what I'm missing guys is the trade buyers. I'm having the public coming in and the public are buying all the jewellery and they're buying all the pretty porcelains or the pretty crystals. But I'm missing the dealers for the, the proper antiques. So I've decided to sacrifice um, a leafleting day today up in the valleys. <coughs> Excuse me. And what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to get the leaflets out to all the trade this morning. 
and I'm going to pass a few leaflets on to some people I know in the trade and ask them to put them out on their stalls when they stall out. I know a couple here who uh, work at Bugamani. So I'll ask them to put some leaflets out for me and so forth. And we'll see how it goes. Uh, as you know, I'm not going to knock the shop. Um, and to be honest with you, if it keeps going at, this own, at the rate it's going, then I'd keep the shop on indefinitely. It'd be my uh, permanent job in that uh, premises. It's a small shop, but it really doesn't need to be any bigger. Because as something sells, I put something out. Um, trying to think, lost my train of thought there, just a second. Obviously, uh, Christmas is a little over a month away now. So I'm bringing in all the money I can for one, I'm obviously expecting a lot of people to come in the shop selling me stuff. Everybody wants money for Christmas. So I gotta have a few thousand pounds in that shop waiting for people to bring things in. Last thing I want is somebody to bring two or three grand's worth of gold in and me say, well, I'm sorry, I can't buy it, I don't have the money. So I'm raising money for that and holding money back for that. And at the same time, as you all know, I have a large family. Um, and four children at Christmas and, a, and an adopted daughter and a grandbaby. It ain't, don't come cheap, guys. One's asked for an iPhone 7 Plus, another one's asked for a Galaxy 8 Plus, plus computers, plus laptops, plus Xboxes. It is not going to be a cheap, cheap year. But they'll all get what they've asked Santa for because Santa loves them. So, yeah, <laughs> lots of work needed. Uh, still struggling to get used to the no beard, guys. Um, I don't know what you all think, but I did ask you not to comment on the other video for uh, fear of more disappointment because so far I haven't had a lot of um, good comments on the lack of beard. Shockingly, everybody criticised that the beard was too scruffy or too long because it was, it was about seven inches long. Um, it was a really good long beard, it's just my hair is so thick and wiry that it just instead of just flowing. But you know, no sooner than life cut it, everybody's mourn will where's it gone? I'm not gonna grow it back yet because the one person did love it was my daughter. Shannon absolutely adored the fact I shaved the beard off. So I'm not gonna grow it back yet. I may grow it back next year. But at the moment I'm just gonna uh, leave things as they are. Keep cutting my neck when I shave. Joys of being a man. We all have our uh, ailments I suppose. So um, I haven't been able to follow everybody's videos um, unfortunately I've been as you can imagine I've been so busy I've had no phone line at the shop I'm still waiting um, I did phone and book a phone line for the shop um, and it got cancelled twice they now come in on Monday however what I will say the company I'm with now has been brilliant um, and free I was originally going to go with BT BT wanted £140 just to switch a telephone line on that's already run into the shop and £30 a month and I said to him I said well why am I paying for you to switch a phone line on when I'm paying you £30 a month for the next two years I said surely you can switch a phone line on for free and they said no we don't do that but we'll give you a discount they knocked I think it was five or six pound a month off for the first year so I would have had 60 quid back or something like that it was of the um, initial uh, setup costs. <coughs> I went on my phone onto Google and um, I can't think of the name of the company offhand. But they do free setup using BT. Work that out. How is it? I can go to another company outside that's cheaper than BT. They were only £23 a month or £24 a month plus free setup. Uh, using BT Openreach, yeah, BT Openreach wanted thirty pound a month off me and one hundred and forty quid to set it up. It don't make sense. Surely they would have been better off sacrificing the um, setup cost and having my custom. Because one, if I'm at that shop permanent, I'm not going to mess about and change suppliers. Once I got that phone and broadband, in, I'm in. 
and of course once they got the broadband into the shop I can start uploading videos from the shop I can you know I can do listings if I want to at the shop not I need to at the moment um, I can be searching eBay for buying stock and silver and things if I get a quiet 10 minutes I can utilize it online not to mention people can phone me direct at the shop so it's all good everything's moving along really really well I've had no hassle off anybody at all I've had loads of support of the community I've had local councillors come in um, saying if I got any problems to get in touch with them um, they are all seriously supporting me guys I really you know, I couldn't have asked for better in all honesty I think I picked the perfect location for my shop it couldn't have been any better unless I was in a city centre paying thousands and thousands of pounds rates and rents and everything else um, keeping the bills cheap really has worked at the moment the income is high but if the income does slow down after Christmas the bills are cheap enough that it isn't going to matter so I weighed up the odds um, and thought well what can I afford afterwards as extra money without noticing it if everything went pear-shaped because I've signed the contract so I'm liable for the rent on this shop no matter what plain and simple I've got a lease um, and now I got a phone line but truthfully guys at the money I'm paying for the shop it used to cost me more to sell in car boot sales and there's nothing wrong with me holding the odd car boot sale um, my shop's also got a little lane or side at the side of it on uh, just off the main road um, a little private path that used to walk around in my back garden I'm seriously considering through the summertime putting some shelving out there uh, and putting car boot sale stock on there put an outside camera there I'm putting car boot sale stock on there so you know the stuff I'd sell down here for a pound or two pound I just put it all outside and you know just say bric a brac um, shelves two pound an item or something and see how it goes I don't want the stuff in the shop it'll lower the tone in the shop the cheapest item I got really in the shop is about 10 or 12 pound and the dearest item I got is 2000 so I got a whole range of prices for any pocket but I haven't really got anything under a tenner so but we'll see how things go so far it's all going brilliant guys now I've just pulling into Bessemer so I'll see I'll see you later and at the end of the day later I'm gonna show you some stock that I've bought so I shall see you soon guys take care Okay guys, that's me uh, back, um, so I'm going to give you a little look at today's stock buy-in. First of all I have an entire collection of the wonderful world of knowledge, Disney's. Everything you want to know about Disney, fully illustrated from the 70's, an entire encyclopedia set are uh, all about everything about Disney. I don't know if it says how many volumes it comes in. 1973 guys, Danbury Press. Can't see how many volumes it's supposed to be, but uh, I have 19. I paid all of... Yeah, I got through one through to 19 guys. And I paid a princely sum of £10 and they are all in lovely condition. Every one of them is illustrated in colour. 1973, so you're talking 35, 34, 35 year old. So they are what they are. 
Disney uh, memorabilia and Disney history. They're going to be fine. They're going to be probably £25, £30, pound, no problem at all. They've got to be two or three pounds a buck, and there's 19 of them there. So, at two pounds a buck, you know, you're talking pretty much 40 quid. Um, but I wouldn't put that on. I'll probably about 35. Right, moving on. We have a 1979 uh, Corgi Muppet Show Animal. He's in his original box. That's always important to have your stuff boxed. Stop staring at me, Cameron. My my uh, boy and his girlfriend and the baby are over there. Just watching me now. I'll give you a little look at the baby in a minute, guys. You haven't seen her for a while. Here we have a vintage USA leather hat with vents. Not as nice as my hat, but uh, still. This one is a Monterey Bay USA. I'll show you the label for that. And I paid uh, apparently some 50p for the hat. Don't know what I'm going to get for that yet. I'm going to ask a China. I don't know if I told you the. Animal in the Corgi box was a fiver. I'm going to chuck 12 or 15 pound on it. Next, we have a vintage uh, it's the 70s again, 80s. Uh, bear with me. 1984 Ferrari Testarossa die cast model. Um, I'm actually having people coming in the shop at the moment asking for these die-cast vehicles it's in lovely condition cost me two pounds this morning and I'm gonna put 15 on there um, I've got a Shelby version of myself on the shelf so it all depends what cars you collect and you like it is a nice one 1984 so it's got a bit of age as well Next piece we have here is a little mining curiosity. It is for a miner's pocket watch. Now the reason they used to put them into the brass case is because if you took them underground, the brass wouldn't spark. You couldn't take anything underground that could spark, whether it was steel or anything, um, for fear of setting off the gas. So we have here the glass lens, the brass case, all brass, and this is a miner's pocket watch case. Nice little item. Now I paid a tenner for that, but I value that at about 25, 30 pounds. We have a little Brian. Now, I actually bought one of these for Sandra for a birthday a couple of years ago when they come out and I actually paid good money on uh, online for one. I think it was about 25, 30 pounds. It might have even been a bit more. Um, and I bought this one today for 50p. Well, I've been selling the meerkats out of the shop, no problem at all, guys. So I thought, well, do you know what? I'm gonna have a go with the little Brian. And as you can see, he works. And there he goes. As you can see, Bethany likes him. Um, got a bag of jewellery, guys. I'm going to show you that in a minute on close-up. Because I know you like to see that. I had a couple of bucks. I paid a whole princely sum of £1.50. Now, first things first, I'm going to check to see whether I've got them in my collection. If I have, then they're going down the shop for £10 or £15 a buck. If I haven't, then unfortunately, guys, they're not going to become available. £1.50 a buck. Investing in clocks and watches, fully illustrated. And the important one, guys, as you all know, I love 18th century drinking glasses. Investing in Georgian glass. 
Now I've got a lot of books on Georgian drinking glasses. Um, and look at that. As you open it up, you have the heavy blusters from 1720. Wow, beautiful glasses. To think I, I used to handle glasses like that, but I haven't seen them for probably 10 or more years. So, two really good books that I'm really pleased with. Final piece before I show you the jewellery, guys. I do quite like it. It's an oil painting on board. It's, it's not a listed artist that I, I think of, but it, it is a nice quality painting. Oh, you was, Brian. You did. There we go, guys. So, as you can see, it's a little um, like a pier or harbour type scene with all the ships, the boats, maybe some fishing boats or something there. Uh, looking at it, it's probably a 70s or 80s. Um, it is a signed piece down the bottom corner here. I haven't done no research on it yet. But I do like the painting. Actually, it's signed in this corner here, sorry. Um, and the signature is C. Johnson. So I will do some research. It's quite a nice painting, guys. It really is. I love the colours of it as well, believe it or not. Um, they had it priced up at a whole five pounds, but I paid three. For three pound fifty, tell me. Um, for a really nice oil painting on board, little marine one, and it really is a nice painting. I think. Doesn't it look lovely? £3.50 for an oil painting on board. Love it. So, I was really pleased with that, guys. Um, last thing now is to lay out all the jewellery and show you that, and boy, have I got some beautiful jewellery. So, I'll see you in just a second. Okay, guys, so here we have the jewellery. Doesn't look a lot like this, does it? But wait till I zoom in on it all now. Now I'm going to start off with this little piece here is a little sterling silver and jadeite pendant lovely uh, colour into it oh, bear with me a second really nice polishing on the stone, lovely colour, I love it nice uh, silver mount next piece here, Sandra loves um, it's an antique arrowhead that's been mounted in silver on a silver chain. Now arrowheads you can buy 5, 10, 20 pound, no problem at all. To turn it into a beautiful piece of jewellery like that, really, really nice. Now this stuff, I haven't come in for nothing. I paid a fiver for the jadeite pendant. I've paid a tenner for the arrowhead necklace. We have a beautiful 900 silver brooch there with um, a building on there. I haven't done the research yet on what building it is, but uh, I will get there. We come across here. Look at that, guys. Mother's Day coming up soon. Beautiful. Antique sterling silver with gold overlaid flowers and leaves and the word mother fully hallmarked on the back just not 925 full set of hallmarks uh, just by there so it's going to be 1900 1920 something like that beautiful little mother brooch i paid a tenner for that guys but oh wow that's going to fly out they ain't going to see anything like that around mountain ash i don't know if i told you sorry that one i paid a fiver for Again, another piece of jade. We have a jade brooch, uh, pendant and brooch. I paid a fiver for that again. Uh, beautiful little piece. I do like jade. Here we have a white metal, it's not stamped, but it is silver. Polished jade bangle. Now this is, I can't even begin to explain to you guys how nice this is. Now I've actually paid £20 for this. Uh, I really do rate it. It is beautiful. It's uh, jade it is not jade, and it's a spinach colour. Beautiful, beautiful bangle. Now, I haven't seen a quality piece like this for a while, and you probably can't tell on the video 
how good a quality this is. Um, but I'm certainly going to be asking 45 to 55 for that bangle alone. But I, as I say, I paid £20 for that. Next, we have a piece of Diana memorabilia. We have a little pendant with Diana, Princess of Wales, when she died. So it's 1961 to 1997. And on the back, you have the English rose. Now, this is mounted in gold. All the way around the side is gold. And we have the gold loop at the top. I paid a fiver again, guys. But again, that's not going to be a problem. 20 quid, 25 quid for that. Beautiful ring. Now, I've paid more than I normally would for this ring. I've paid a tenner for this. Um, but it really is stunning, guys. Still in silver, set with what looks to be an onyx or black stone. Fully all marked. But it does look amazing on. It's a large ring. You can't see how large it is on the video. Um, but it is beautiful. But I don't think I'll have a problem getting 20 to 25 for that. Thing is, everything I'm selling, every 10 items I'm selling in the shop, at least 6 or 7 of them are jewellery. So I have to replace it, but not just replace it, replace it with quality. This piece here I love. Good thick, 22, 24 inch chain, and it is a good chain. Uh, it's not a flimsy chain. But look at that, guys. Wow. Shark's tooth. Jagged edge. Beautiful piece, mounted in silver. And this ain't a small tooth, guys. This is out of um, a, quite a large shark. This tooth is a good inch inch and a half long so you're talking a really nice tooth um, you know they can't go to Gus Jones or one of the jewelers up in Aberdeen and buy something like this you know that is quite special and that's exactly what I want in the shop stuff they can't buy anywhere else absolutely beautiful I love it now I'm going to be putting probably 45 on that and I'll just let it sit until it goes if it takes long Sandra's already been eyeing it up in fact, Sandra's been eyeing the shark's tooth and the arrowhead up. Got a rope chain here. Quality. Um, probably an ounce of silver. Really thick quality rope chain. Um, I had that from a gentleman in Cardiff and this sort of beaded necklace. Um, like a and I paid him £12 for the two of those. Now, I'm not going to struggle to get 20 for that one, no problem at all, and I'll get a tenner back on that one. So, for my £12, I'm going to get £30 back there. This shark stuff was £15, and I'm going to get probably 40 45 for that. All in all, guys, a bit of money spent on jewellery today, but I'm pulling some good money in at the shop on jewellery, so I'm not going to moan. But... Some of it is absolutely amazing. This is the type of jewellery I want to buy if I'm going to buy jewellery, guys. Now, a friend of mine, a dealer, came down to Best Man. He turned up with his jewellery cabinets, and I had the pick of the litter. Really did. There was hardly any dealers down there today. Um, he seriously worked with me. I can't decide what my best buy of the day is. I absolutely love them all. I love the Arrowhead. I love the Shark's Tooth. I love the... You know, the jade bangle. Love this brooch. In fact, there's nothing here I don't love. So, really, really good haul of jewellery, guys. Just a little sneaky peek, guys, because she's fast asleep. Okay guys, so, uh, got to be super quiet now, I don't want to wake the baby up. Bethany's slowly nicking all my Disney books now in the week to them, she absolutely loves them. I know if that's not a recommendation of how good they are, then nothing <laughs> is, isn't it? You have a 17 or 18 year old babe? 17. 17 year old girl, in love with my Disney books. So obviously I'm in the right market. Now, do you remember 
back in the summer holidays when I bought the most magnificent Italian marble lamp. Well, I bought that one and obviously you saw the West German lamp that I told you I was going to have rewired to be an internal and an outside lamp. Well, the West German lamp is still in being rewired. However, my marble lamp's back, guys. There we go. It has the antique twisted uh, effect to the uh, wire, to the cable. Paid a lot of money to have it rewired and done. The marble has been professionally cleaned. It's had all the chrome fittings around the top. Uh, this small but elegant shade doesn't it doesn't hide any of the horse, so it finishes at the head of the horse, top of the head, but doesn't stand too tall. It really looks amazing in situ, guys. Now, what can I say? The lamp is spectacular. Um, I bought it for myself out of Gethly Gear this year. I paid fifteen pound for the lamp. It's signed Italian marble on the base, guys. Um, as I've said, I've had it all professionally rewired, chrome fittings, nice new lampshade. All the marble's been professionally cleaned with proper marble uh, restorer. And it does look, well, what can I say? It looks a million dollars, guys. Now, the cost. Cost me £40 to have all the fittings, the lampshade, and the rewiring done. Uh, that's materials and labour. It was done as a favour to me. And I tell you now, chrome fittings are 5 and £10 a piece. This antique cable is fortunes. I could have had a normal white flex, but I didn't want it. I wanted the twisted antique look to it, so it looks old. And it looks beautiful. It's not up for sale, guys. Um, I would imagine a lamp like this being two, three, four hundred pounds to try and buy this. It's not up for sale, as I've said. It's mine. It sits in the corner of my room and looks amazing. I love it, um, and I can't wait to see my the finished article on the West German fat lava lamp. You just saw my uh, jewelry. God, love it. Some beautiful, beautiful pieces, guys. All that's going out in the shop this week, ready for Christmas. Um, but that's the type of jewellery I want to be selling in my shop. No questions about it. It cost me money, but you don't get quality for nothing. You really don't. And some of this is really nice. You can't realise on the film how nice... Oh. Excuse me. You can't see on the film how nice some of these pieces are. And I mean that, guys. All in all, it's been an absolute stormer of a day. Let me knock this off. Sorry about that. Right. All in all, it's been a stormer of a day. Um, I'm going to have a nice little earner off these books. Uh, the jewellery is going to be a serious earner. Um, some of the other pieces you've seen today are good. And I love that oil painting. Do you know I'm going to put that at probably 55 or 65 pounds? And do you know I honestly believe that's going to go no problem at all. Um, it go really well in any you know pub anchor or boatman or anything. If it's got a nautical name or if it's down by the sea, that's going to fly out. Really nice uh, pet oil painting. Real nice quality and balance. All in all, not a lot of money spent. Uh, overall when you actually compare for the items but some beautiful pieces and of course you got to see my beautiful granddaughter and you got to see my lamp so all in all really pleased hope you've enjoyed guys if you have I would appreciate a like and a share if you're new to the channel please subscribe leave a comment below to let me know you've subscribed and I'll give you a thumbs up you'll find me on Facebook I have a page on the group Antiques Arena you find me on eBay. If you run a search by seller on eBay, run a search for Antiques Arena Clearance. And I have my own website, antiquesarena.co.uk and antiquesarena.com. Or you can come find me in Mountain Ash, guys, number 78 Oxford Street, Mountain Ash, Charlie Fox Road 45, 3 Hotel Bravo. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. <laughs> She's laughing at me. <laughs>